So, in order to uh, raise the questions that are in this little bit messy uh, thing, I uh, try to uh, talk about some different aspects and also uh, some uh, examples of my own work to uh, illustrate it. <clears throat> in Art and Objecthood from 1967, uh, Michael Fried criticizes this kind of art as a new genre of theater. According to Fried, this sensibility is theatrical because it's concerned with the actual cir circumstances in which the spectator encounters the work. The art is concerned with the entire situation, including the spectator's body. Furthermore, these objects in space have a kind of stage, stage presence. The size of the object compares fairly closely with that of the human body, and, quote, the apparent hollowness of these works, the quality of having an insight is almost blatantly anthropomorphic. <clears throat> Uh, others, uh, other artists would agree with this notion of theater and took their own impulses from uh, minimal art to develop their uh, performance art. This is a, a really nice comparison of different art forms and how you relate object and dances uh, to, to another. Uh, from Yvonne Reiner. Um, this kind of critique came from a concept of medium specificity. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's a really nasty word. So, according to this concept, the inherent qualities specific to each different artistic medium and part of the modernist project involve, involve creating artworks that were more and more committed to their particular medium. So painting should about uh, uh, emphasize the two-dimensionality of the, of the surface, its flatness, and uh, according to that, the music is supposed to be about sound. Um, for me, I think listening is more than about sound, and uh, uh, I, as an example, I would explain a little experiment from the motor theory of speech from the 1970s. So you uh, uh, see someone articulating the sound ba, you listen to the sound ga, and what you perceive is the sound da, so the sound right in the middle of the mouth between these two sounds. So uh, this, in a nutshell, involves so, sight, sound, knowledge of the body, uh, uh, and a connection between the listener and uh, the uh, producer of the sound of, or of the articulation. And I'm very interested in this connection between sound movement and the visual. Just as uh, experiences of sound intent intensifies when watching the musician, mo movement also gains plasticity, plasticity through the sound it produces. And I also would like to emphasize the role of empathy, of feedbacks, and all the shifting modes of attention and awareness that uh, I think are so important in uh, experience of art. So the spectator is an active producer who completes the work of art with his body, his senses, his imagination, and his knowledge. And I find interesting that as soon as an art form is not only concerned with the specific qualities, there's obviously no other term for this area between the arts than theater. In uh, 2012, I left the concert format to find a different kind of music theater and I gave this endeavor the name Kammer Electronik. The intention uh, to look at the whole situation led me to take the conditions of the performance into my own hands and to produce outside the established institutions. So I started to form small interdisciplinary teams of musicians, dancers, and technicians. I really don't like this, this term. These are artists who work with electronic media and who are quite often composers of electronic music. So this is a... Uh, the very first room I did, did this, this uh, picture of it, and this was a picture of the performance. These pieces are usually about one hour long, and the space, the instrumentation, and the performance change from piece to piece. And my uh, inner goal mission uh, statement is to produce such a piece every year. 
working with dancers on music has changed very much the way I compose and for whom I compose. And I think when we talk about interdisciplinarity, uh, writing for musicians other than the highly specialized contemporary music practitioners is a very important point. Over the years, I've worked with musicians from all kinds of uh, background, from jazz to improvisation to early music, and of course, also from contemporary music. And I learned a lot from inventing music for musicians who don't play notated music or who are more used to lead sheets. What interests me, spaces where skills are harder to spot, that make less spectacular demands on the body, and where calm control and care count instead of virtuous performances. I don't write for instruments, but for performers. Uh, a conversation I have always have with uh, performers is, what other instruments do you play? Do you sing? Do you speak? Uh, what was your body training over the course of your life? Do you do sports? Do you do yoga? Do you do martial arts? What else do you do? Uh, uh, what kind of art you like? What your music you listen to? And I think it's very important to look at all the abilities, uh, sensibilities and skills of performers. So we talked a, a little bit about how composers change in this day and age and I'm uh, very much interested also how performers change. And I think uh, in a way uh, these two fields merge and uh, I think it's also uh, something why improvisation is so uh, important to talk about. Um, okay, why? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, why I'm side of the lesson? No. Yeah, uh, I forgot uh, a part where uh, uh, in the, the middle that uh, on the stages I usually uh, I work in small spaces and I create uh, uh, small instruments like uh, uh, comparable. Um, um, uh, we saw in uh, your lecture, uh, and I, I think these are uh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. In this, so in this case, we have a metal plate, a spring drum, a sine wave generator, a microphone, and a small music stand. And what I like about this kind of instrument, as opposed to the multifunctional kitchens like setup that are still popular in contemporary music is that the actions of the performers are clearly emphasized and the instrument and the performance is in a way readable by the audience and I try to build understandable mechanisms and easy decipherable devices. Such simple electromechanical instruments allow performers with limited musical training to produce interest, interesting sounds and bring their individual movement training into it. So as a, composers, uh, as a composer you can do quite uh, different things with such uh, seemingly in, uh, simple instruments, I think. Uh, so, I, before I took this departure, uh, I was talking about the, the, uh, the role of the performer and how this, uh, the performer changes. So, this is a letter from Johann uh, Joachim Quanz, uh, living 1697 to 17. 73, who describes his mutation from a time when music was a job like any other to a time when it was the occupation of a specialist. So at the age of eight, he accompanied his brother who served as a village musician in a peasant festival on Basviolone. At the age of 11, he began his training learning violin, then oboe, then trumpet, and then the cornet, the hunting horn, the recorder, the bassoon, the bass violone, the viola da gamba, and also other instruments a good music musician must able to play, and he did not ne neglect them. So after his training, he became intensely involved with the traversflöte, traverse flute, and began to compose for this instrument, as there was not enough literature for, uh, for it. Meanwhile, he played in most different formations and contexts, but what caught him completely unprepared was that in 1741 he became a member of the orchestra of the Prussian king Frederick II as a flutist and stayed in his service to the rest of his life. So, and nowadays we have, I think, uh, a little bit the other way around. So, uh, today uh, you can observe that um, you have an education that is designed for the division of labor, specialization and profit analyzation 
And then you meet composers like me, who don't write for instruments, but for performers, and who want to know what else can you do outside your mastery of your instruments. And as a flutist, you end on my stage uh, uh, and playing the drums. So, uh, um, so this is uh, Kamera Electronic 7, Silver Studio, Daniel Argen, he's a really fine flute player. And as a kind of pastiche of Andy Warhol's multimedia shows created with the Velvet Underground, pastiche, a flick opera, is a, a, a piece of art that openly imitates the art of others, something which, uh, like the neutral middle between the homage and the parody. Uh, in these pieces, a lot of formats can come together. Instrumental music, fixed media electronic music, improvisation, simple live electronics, fluxes like mini performances, tasks, games, movements, dance, the stage as an instrument, light, all, uh, in all uh, different constellations. Um, and uh, I think you could uh, uh, be quite specific about uh, these individual uh, components that are in these pieces. Um, these music theatres in chamber format have fundamentally changed the way I compose, notate, produce music, music and more importantly the way I think about and try to create collaborative processes and rehearsals today. Uh, I would like to illustrate uh, this uh, with an example from one of my concert performances, as I call them. Most people think of musical theater as something like an opera or something that has to do with text or narration. And uh, I've observed that um, uh, my dancers uh, I work with uh, talk about they have a concert and the musicians say they have a performance. So uh, I uh, call them concert, concert performances as concert performances. Um, it's also important for me to say that these pieces allow me to present music in a context that makes the origin of the ideas I'm referring to readable to many more people than pieces of music alone. And I think that electronic music in particular is too preoccupied with the future. And I also find it interesting to find ways of, of thinking out loud about the past of electronic and instrumental music and all kinds of small scale theater activities that took place. And uh, I'm interested about and I think they are still relevant. Many ideas of electronic music are not new and some are all, even older than the invention of electricity like this instrument for the synthesis of speech by Wolfgang von Kempelen from 1793. Um, in my search for small formats in which movement, sound, stage and light came together in a chamber format I, think I began to think about the 19th century seance and ghost photography. Um, and the starting point was uh, Sir Conan Doyle. Uh, and he made lectures uh, with approximate 50, uh, approximately 50 slides where the means to convince the audience in numerous lectures and articles that spirits can be fixed on photographs, that uh, materializations and contacts exist that not only voices can be heard and taps received, but samples of handwriting and some print in wax-covered gloves can be taken. According to Doyle, communication with ghosts is ex exactly complementary to fiction. Sherlock Holmes is a fictional hero who is believed to be a real figure, whereas in spiritism we think that everything is fiction, but in fact the apparitions are real. Um, a important part of my work is research, and I'm uh, looking through photos, sound recordings, read all kinds of texts before I uh, in, uh, find the ideas I want to work with. So I looked at performances like uh, this and photographs like this. And uh, um, uh, I found a performance I want to work with in, uh, for this piece. Um, I found uh, Annegret Meyer Lindenberg, a viola player in the field of contemporary and early music, who also works as a violin maker. And I found, uh, and she plays viola d'amore uh, uh, in this piece. Actually, she built the uh, viola d'amore also. Um, uh, this is Carolina Martins, who works in the field of early music and plays viola da gamba and also cello. 
And uh, third is Linda Nordstrom, a dancer whom I've been collaborating for many years, plus two composers who take care of sound and light. Um, so one of the very early uh, rehearsals looked uh, like this. We, we, we mainly were, we were talking. I showed research, so showed photographs, materials, instruments, and uh, shared stories, and uh, I, I found it interesting. Uh, we were experimenting together with uh, specific possibilities and techniques of the instruments, talking about movements, about uh, uh, quality of sound, about uh, really uh, small details uh, uh, in the uh, instrumental practice of these instruments. Um, and in the evening, the four of us tried to take some spirit photos. So photos like these are kind of mini performance condensed into an image. Um, so the exposure time of uh, such an image is like 15 to 30 seconds. And one performer sits still and there are uh, around three of us uh, working with light and all kinds of white stuff to uh, uh, try to do this. Um, a very important, and uh, also this, this scene of staging photographs became a part of the, um, of the performance, performance. A very uh, important theme became ectoplasm. Uh, uh, when you think of Ghostbusters, uh, the slime thing in the 19th century, uh, it was distorted clothes, uh, cotton, wool, all kinds of things that are white and a bit formless. And um, this led me to think about string instruments, because when you think of these horse hair smeared with tree rising, bowing over gut strings stretched on a wooden corpus, it's a bit uh, creepy, isn't it? <coughs> so uh, I would like to show you three little excerpts. These are uh, uh, mainly the, the more theoretical uh, parts of it. They are also, as I said, uh, parts where um, like more musical uh, pieces happen. So can we turn the lights a little bit down? On the right hand side, the top of the bottom, the the Third part is uh, third except is with the desk.
Um, one part I was really thinking about is this aspect of merge and uh, emerge. And um, I think we uh, tend to focus too much on the individual artists and don't appreciate the spaces and scenes from which interesting art emerges. And I think uh, we should uh, think more about uh, social situations, collaborations, and uh, ways to support uh, and empower local structures. So I, um, uh, I found um, this in David Burns' How Music Works. And he thinks about why the CBGBs, uh, the uh, club, were uh, so important for punk rock, for Ramones, for Patti Smith, for Talking Heads, uh, worked that well for this community. And I don't think it's, uh, you can just transport it to contemporary or electronic music, but I think there are a lot of uh, interesting points uh, in, in this. Um, the, so, the, the part social transparency must be encouraged. I think a little bit ex, uh, uh, you should explain this. So in this uh, area you see there are no dressing rooms. Uh, so there were little uh, dressing, dressing rooms without doors. So there was no privacy and no VIP area. So every uh, kind of uh, diva behavior is completely uh, not possible. And the performers uh, were uh, also interacting <laughs> with the audience. And also, uh, he points out that the jukebox of the uh, CBGBs was f also filled with um, records uh, that the bands that played there um, so it's a, a kind of crowdsourced uh, jukebox. Um, so I, I, I think I leave this. Uh, here and I think uh, also when we think about what we can do for uh, uh, these spaces um, uh, uh, we can think of uh, uh, would like to think about uh, first uh, about festivals and um, uh, I think we really um, should change uh, just uh, showing um, uh, pieces that are commissioned just for these uh, festivals and uh, try to uh, show um, uh, productions that uh, have pr produced independently uh, and get a wider audience. So this is, would really help, I think. Um, for the Ruhrgebiet, I think the, the main part, the first one, spaces, spaces, spaces. So, um, and um, uh, for Falkong University, I was quite intrigued and kind of happy that uh, um, Claudius Lazzaroni said that so much interdisciplinary work uh, and connections happen here. And I really like to hear, especially from the students, how they perceive this and how their experiences are in the, these fields, because I think we can do much better in this. So I think I'll leave it from here, and uh, as always, I uh, end with the community imperative from Hansel Förster. So, thank you.
And it has been a really like um, lovely um, like a working situation there where someone is asking, yeah, I need for my project like these kind of people. Uh, do you know someone or are you interested? And like call me or write me if you're interested or something. So we can do that better. And I think uh, before we only had this whole situation that you could like maybe um, write one of your professors and the professor would then connect it to another professor who would ask his uh, his or students. And it was like a really long process. Now you can actually just go to the group, ask, or you can just like scroll through. And most people do have like pictures of their work in there, or they have a description of what they work with. So you just don't have to ask. You can also just ask the person directly. Hey, I saw you do this kind of work. Are you interested? Yeah, I want to add to that. There's a group of students who want to push the idea of. Um, interdisciplinary work even further by reinstating the Forza platform um, and make it more um, interdisciplinary by moving the location not only from Pina Bausch but to the other uh, company as well like, yeah. uh, and, and uh, allow, for example, uh, other disciplines to form their staff there. Um, that's one idea, and the Polkan Connect group is, uh, the Telegram group is nice, a nice starting point, and there are ideas to even uh, develop this further into a digital blackboard where you can pin your projects and maybe even put in, like, hey, I need a composer for my theater, and I need someone for the lights and stuff like that. And maybe you can develop that. Let's see uh, how that will work out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the most important thing is that you have the structure for it. So it's just kind of difficult for the students when they, they have to do it in their free time, you know? Yeah. So if you like, don't get credit points for being a discipline, that was the most important, but also the most difficult thing, but because you have the proof of this art. Mm -hmm. And this tells you you never know, get credit, credit points for this kind of stuff. And if there's not a professor who's like, like very open-minded <laughs> in this kind of game, giving the credit points for something, it doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. how, how can you do it when you have so much time to put in your work to get your yeah. study done? Yeah. So as, as soon as you open it, then it works perfectly. And that, that's one of the goals we decide the wonderful uh, things to do. And we have to really do it. So you have different platforms that like you, you say like yeah, rooms, yeah. but also like the infrastructure to to to, uh, yeah. to do this kind of um, interdisciplinary by getting credit cards for that is easy to plan. It's a stupid system which you have to break. Even if you have to go there and say, hey, change the rules because we want to work with this. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always sort of time in the day, isn't there? Yeah. And the students already have a lot of um, classes to visit. Right. And if these classes are part of the interdisciplinary possibilities, then yeah. it's kind of, kind of easier. Yeah. At least there is flexibility, though. I mean, it is up to individual uh, teachers to provide an open framework to, to develop interdisciplinary projects if they want to. It's not like other uh, systems where it's absolutely predetermined what you will learn at a certain course and there's no movement left or right. Yeah, so the, 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 we can improve things here, but it's already pretty good, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's true for persons like you and me and Thomas and stuff. If they are open minded, mm -hmm. but maybe you have students like another another part, if, if you are still, it depends still professor mm -hmm. decides that this is like worth uh, getting credit points. Yeah. And if you would change a little bit the system, so we have like maybe what we just try, you know, have like a, like a course or like a, uh, a program which you can study and can take it into your program. You don't even have to ask the professor. Mm -hmm. Because you just do this and not that. And you still get your final degree. And this is something that you just yeah. try to work on. I think you just be, I would just caution to be careful what you wish for, because as soon as you say that kind of thing, you're essentially taking away responsibility from the professors, and then you have design by committee, and before you know it, people have no clue about the field of deciding what's being taught. I mean, that's, I've experienced that on, on, on a daily basis. Thank you very much for your talk, really very inspiring. Um, I think I should about these spaces, because um, yeah. depending on the situation,
institution, let's say you bring together a video maker, a dancer, yeah. and some of the electronic musicians, and you give them a space for how long do they have that space uninterrupted, not breaking up and setting up every day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so those spaces very often they become so specific they're not shareable anymore. Yeah. So you have, let's say, you make a course and you have three groups emerging from it. You need three rooms in order to make their projects happen. Is that something the university provides or? Mm. I'm not sure. No, not really. It depends where you are, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think the space within the university is certainly uh, a difficult issue. Okay. It is possible to get spaces for longer periods, but it's not always easy. Okay. Uh, so a little bit from the point of view of the dean of the faculty, the space is really rare and, and much longer um, resources. Yeah, but and so it's time that the students have no time to really experiment because they spend most of the time schlepping gear from one place to go, <laughs> setting it up, and then having two hours to do something to break down. This is not going to work. So I think, I mean, we have discussed this at end, and we have no space for it. So I'm just at the end of my input to this in our own institution. But if you think about this as an institutional platform, you can have spaces. Yes, sure. But we also need to have spaces, for instance, for, for musicians to practice. And we have um, uh, brass instruments that usually cannot practice at home because they will not have a home for a long time afterwards. And uh, they cannot practice in every room here because they will disturb the guitars playing on, on, on the room next door. So the room is just really complicated. And then there are ensembles. Ensembles in larger spaces and single musicians for uh, um, so there are, there are only ever so many rooms where smaller or large ensembles can, um, uh, can realize. We cannot, I mean, if, I, if, if we had the money and if we had the allowance, we would take away the parking lot over there and build a huge building over there. And to make it by some of the, or maybe, then maybe most of the, of the, of the demands and the, and the, uh, and the wishes people have. But space is definitely something you always, you always, have, to, you always have to fight for. And uh, the reaction on that is that, that things like, like Claudius and, and we do, we try to build mobile, mobile, um, mobile equipment that quite not, not really easily, but quite easily can be moved from one space to another so that with, a little, uh, with little effort it can be installed in a, in a week. Uh, in the training room for the campus, it can be installed in the channel music, or it can be installed in this, uh, in this workshop on the other campus. Because one of the problems we have at Portland is we have uh, about five different campuses spread all over the, the rural area. So if we work together and want, not, want, want to make it, uh, want to make it uh, remotely, be it by Zoom or something, one of us has to travel for half an hour and meet. Throughout, throughout, throughout the city, let alone uh, uh, wanting to do something together with the, with the actors which should be in open. So that's not how that's the problem. It's not that it's really Before good. this descends into a your fix kind of thing, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move to Martha. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I want to bring it back to electronics if possible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can do this. So I have two questions and I'm yeah. So one is that um, the because I think what you said about the, that you are building your own space yeah. and you're, you're writing for performance raised again the political question that are connected pretty much with what the students are saying. So I have a question for the institution and for the students. For the, for the institution is that how the institution help the student to go outside the institution yeah. So how much is connected with the territory around? Yeah. And for the students, is that how do you feel about the institution supporting you? Do you need it? How much do you feel that there is an invasion instead, that they are trying to control your work? How much power do you feel you have to go outside and to be independent? And you will be in the future after this step. Okay, it's so still 1968. Go ahead. Who's going to answer that? I think it depends if you are doing a bachelor or master study. I did a master study and uh, I had a lot of time to look around to the different models um, of physical and interdisciplinary work. And we have the uh, optional union here for optional study. Uh, you can go there and uh, 
<coughs> we spent a long time developing technological infrastructure to allow us to achieve a certain amount of reliability in performance situations. Yeah. And then when we achieved that, we spent then a lot of time making situations and, and infrastructures, technological infrastructures, that were more open and that were maybe prone to failure or prone to um, things happening you didn't expect, which might be good, which might be bad. Is there anything that stands out in your mind, or in anyone's mind here, in working with, let's say, more open, bespoke systems? Is there anything that stands out in your mind that, that was really surprising, that, that gave amazing, either musical results or artistic results in general, that you then really took further? So, a, a sound or a structure, something yeah. that you set up technologically, which gave you something you didn't expect. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm putting yeah. you on the spot right now, it could be anyone, yeah. because that's kind of related to the topic and I'm, I'd be interested to, to hear about that, because I know it happens to me all the time with software. Yeah, I, I think these, these uh, little uh, theatre uh, spaces I built are a kind of instruments. Ah. So, and I have uh, a whole lot of plans uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to do in there. So I, uh, I, have, I don't have a lot of time to spend in these rooms, unfortunately. Yeah. So there's a lot of preparation yeah. and, and um, uh, uh, building small models at home with, with instruments. So this is also why I don't use high tech. So I, I use flashlights and, and mirrors and, yeah. and uh, small stuff I carry around and, and uh, go to the, to, to the performers and, uh, so they can really lay hands on it. Yeah. And uh, so, and and then I built these instruments for three days and rehearsed there, and I have a pretty clear plan what the piece is going to be like. And always there's something happening that uh, is unexpected. This is, uh, uh, and it also leads to to things where okay, we discovered this now. So I'm sorry that uh, you I've written uh, four pages of score, but two pages of this has to go. Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of a normal thing that happens in these spaces, and uh, yeah. I mean, well, thank you very much for the talk. I think it was very nice. It was very nice, very clear what you have in mind. I think you are doing a lot of your students too, and you seem to have the support as well, so put it for that. Um, one thing that struck me a bit, and I wanted to ask you, everything what you described in these spaces and all your activities here are very specific. So what about when you want to reproduce that? Uh, because I didn't hear that word. It looks like everything is unique. You have unique performance, you style them, you then compose for them. Yep. What happens when you don't have that space, you don't have those music, but you still have those ideas that could be performed at some point somewhere else? Yeah, so uh, one thing is, I. Uh, I just think about mainly about things I can produce. Mm -hmm. So other stuff is I don't, I, I really don't don't care. So uh, the the things I can do is the things that, that are on my mind. And the other thing is the thing that I uh, I produce to carry further. This is a, 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 a thing that is a, a complicated question. So uh, uh, because um, you can get funding for such a little piece but you can't get funding to show it again. So, because we already paid for it, so you don't get uh, uh, money a second time. So, so this is also something, in, in, like in, in, in theater and in dance festivals, this is quite common. Like, like you, you have a, a production and, and so show us the video and we, we say, okay, yeah, you can show it at the uh, festival. And contemporary music festivals, you get a commission to do uh, a zombie piece. So, Goodbye. no, yeah. no, yeah. please don't. Um, I have a question for you uh, for what you think you can deliver with this. Yeah. So, if you had that small space on yeah. your first image that was a scale of one meter, yeah. and I'm imagining three performers being in there. Yeah, this was the really, very first one. I really, this was a try, like, a, a, really first starting point and it's growing a little okay. bit. So, uh, my question is more 
if I'm in the room, I experience the single connection between these three entities, yeah. these three humans. I find that very fascinating, but with your close-up videos, you actually show something totally different. Yeah. So what is for you, is this a different information to the video on that? No, the, the, the uh, video is not, this is, that, that's the documentation. Okay. I don't work with video. Uh, video is something that takes the, the, uh, uh, the focus away from the, the performance. So I, I don't, I work with light, but I don't work with video and projection. So, but what you showed us today was yeah. video and then we had a close-up on yes, yeah, 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 this yeah, yeah, yeah. etc. So that's something an audience member in that room, even being pretty close to the audience, almost with not experience. Yeah, yeah. But, this is uh, um, so, but I, I think um, uh, that uh, with the spaces and the lights, you can uh, create a pretty dense focus on it. And, and the, the, the spaces are still small, so you can do a lot with, with uh, uh, um, also not enhancing it with video to, to uh, get an experience and also an haptic. Uh, tactile quality of the, the performance. So, but uh, I think uh, you're right. This is a, a total different uh, thing, and it, uh, it would be uh, more. In, I just showed close-ups uh, uh, stuff because I, I, don't, I don't know. You like, like this material, so. Yeah. Yeah, this is not okay, this is the camera. Yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> it's not kind of documentation and that kind of video cutting. A lot to do with the fact that when you look at your flat surface, you, you can't, you no longer have the autonomy to, to, to change your focus really. So you can't turn your head and look around there or look over there like you do when you're in the space. So yeah. we sort of have someone simulate it for us yeah. with yeah. the camera work and the editing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. Uh, Martin. So I saw that on stage there were some stands. Yeah. We have a score. Yeah. So my question is. Uh, the job is unpredictable. So, how much do you rotate? Yeah. And how you uh, so the, the strategy, the compositional strategy to fix things yeah. in the timeline? Yeah. And where you put the this part to, to, to the unforeseen, unforeseen yeah. of, of your. Yeah. So, um, uh, there are uh, always notated uh, parts. In it, but there are also I work with improvisation and also uh, like the, this this part with the hair and this uh, the she's she's actually doing trying to to make the sound of squeaking doors and uh, uh, the the third player is building freestyle bows of uh, ectoplasm uh, and uh, going through the room and so this is the part this is. Uh, rehearsed and made like with like theatre, yeah. So uh, there's no notation, and sometimes there's an, an, is notation, and it's just a means of uh, get the process going. And if it's if everyone knows what are the possibilities, and then then we don't need the text. So and sometimes it's just a, a, a graph where you you see a, a structure happening on. On fixed media that holds the scene together, and you know, okay, uh, there's a uh, there's a there's a light coming, or there's a there's the the, the, the deep sound coming, and uh, this is the cue for me to go there and take my flashlight and uh, uh, look at my hand or something like that. So you are in the process. Yes. Of the building. Yeah. 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 Robert, you made a, a, an interesting statement during the talk, which yeah. was that we are too concerned with the future, yes. which is something I immediately identified with and then thought, Christ, though, most of the time I'm struggling with the present, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, 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 did you, what did you mean by that in your work or in the work you know of? Yeah, I think um, one thing is every time I, I have an, an idea, I look who else had this idea? Where did it come from? So I never think this is my idea. So I always, and I want to know where this came from and he, where he got it from. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, so this, this is something I'm, I'm really into. And also the, when I identified, okay, this is, uh, I can connect to, to 
why he had this idea. And then I, I tried to show also, also this context so, and try to transform it on, on stage. So this, the, all kinds of, of things from, from movement to the way the instruments uh, are. So this is something I, I said about readability. Yeah. So that, that all kinds of knowledge uh, can can uh, it can be useful and everyone can make something of it. So okay, so so it's actually more of a more of a concentration almost on the past up to the present. Yes, uh, but with the, with the idea. And also, uh, think that I sti still I think not finished. Yeah. So the, the, these are there uh, and they they are old and and. Uh, so you, you see the, the, the speech machine of, of uh, Campbellin, so this is all device and you see the, the electrical versions from the 30s of it and so yeah. the, these are all the ideas and we are still developing. Yeah. Uh, this, is, so this, is, this is a really important acknowledgement of the social construction of art, yeah, which you also spoke of, there's too much concentration on single artists. Yeah. And this is one solution, isn't it, to actually engage with what's already been presented to us, acknowledge that, instead of saying, look at me, I'm a great genius with this new idea, yeah. and, and working collaboratively. It yeah. needs a more healthy environment, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a, a, a little book, it's called Seal Like an Artist, yeah. and I think it's, uh, it's uh, great that uh, you just rip, don't rip things off, but that say, OK, yeah. here, I, I got this idea from, from yeah. you. Thank you. I, I yeah. want to show it again. Yeah. It's a good idea. We could stop there, if it's, if, if, unless someone's got something really urgent to say. We've got seven minutes till, till Martha starts talking. Go on, Larissa. I do have a question, because like, usually in a like, university context, because you use like, musicians, as you said, like, you have the flutes and then you put them uh, on the drums. Yeah. And like in university, when we're like, searching for people for a product, you We'll probably want a person who's like specialized, yeah. maybe doing a master on this music instrument because you tend to think that they do have a better background and can do produce higher quality kind of uh, work. Yeah, but right. this, this was not about quality, this was about energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so I, I thought about um, uh, uh, Maureen Tucker, the, the drummer of Velvet Underground, and she's not a good drummer. She, no. There's a reason why she has no hi-hat and no, no foot, foot machine. So just two, two hands and you have a beat like boom, chuck, boom, chuck, chuck, and that's it. So, and, and I think this is uh, perfect, yeah? And I, I uh, so a drummer is, no. No, it is, uh, it has, uh, and I know Daniel and, and what he can do and how, uh, how I com communicate with him and uh, also I use the flute in, in other parts but uh, uh, I know that he could do this and we almost didn't rehearse these parts because yeah. I want to be, so this, this it should be rough. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you've really got to start with the Velvet Underground because that's the second time you've heard it this week as we were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's something in the stars there. Um, should we stop there and have coffee and stuff and we'll meet in five minutes with Martha? Thanks, Rob.